Hey everybody, this is Mike Cashin today. I'm one of the aldermen in the city of Clinton, and I am going to read to you a book today that was one of my favorites that was written back in 1961. And this is one of my favorite books that I've ever, ever read when I was a kid about your age. And the title of the book is Leopold the See-Through Crumb Picker, and it's written by Mr. James Flora. So here we go. Leopold is standing right there next to the ring around a rosy girls. Can you see him? No, of course you can't because Leopold is invisible. <clears throat> he is a see-through crumb picker. You see through him just the way you see through a window. But you can see his footprints if you look carefully. Leopold always waits for someone to come along who is eating cookies and making crumbs. One day he waited and waited. A policeman walked down the street, a man rode by on a horse, a train whistled past, but none of them was making crumbs. Then came Minerva. She had lost her front teeth and she was eating vanilla cookies. The crumbs were falling like snow on Christmas day and Leopold followed Minerva. Yum, yum, he said, vanilla cookies, my favorite kind. He was so busy picking up crumbs that he bumped right into Minerva and stepped on her foot. Ouch, Minerva said, who's there? What's that? She couldn't see Leopold, but she could feel him. My goodness, such big toes and long fur, Minerva said. You're big all over. You're bigger than a dog, almost as big as a horse. Maybe I could ride on your back. Leopold purred. He didn't mind at all, so Minerva climbed on his back and rode down the street. People were surprised. They couldn't believe their eyeglasses. A little girl riding in the air with nothing underneath. How could that be? They were so surprised that their hats fell off and they all ran home to take some nerve medicine. Leopold and Minerva laughed and laughed. Leopold liked Minerva. He decided to be her very own crumb picker. Every morning he waited outside her house. She always gave him some nice crumbs for breakfast. Then she would climb on his back. Leopold would pick, her up, pick up her books in his mouth and carry her off to school. One day somebody left the schoolhouse door open. Leopold sniffed inside. He could smell crumbs, so he went inside and that's how all the trouble started. Nobody knew he was there until lunchtime when the children went to get their lunch bags. All the bags were empty and the children began to cry. Oh dear, Minerva said, Leopold must be here. Who's Leopold, the teacher asked. He's my see-through crumb picker, Minerva said, and he's always very hungry. She ran everywhere feeling for him, and sure enough, she found him hiding under a desk. There you are, you naughty thing, Minerva said. I can see crumbs on your whiskers. You ate up all the children's lunches. Leopold whimpered. He didn't mean to be naughty. He thought the children had bought the food for him. Well, the teacher frowned. We just can't have crumb pickers running all over the school eating up everybody's lunch. You'll have to take him home, Minerva, and tie him to a tree or something. Minerva was so cross that she wouldn't ride on Leopold's back. She wouldn't let him carry her books either. She stamped down the street and Leopold followed sadly behind her. He was so sad that it made him hungrier than ever. They passed Mr. Cluckhorn's bakery. The window was piled high with cookies and cakes and pies. And suddenly, whoosh, as if by magic, all the cookies and pies disappeared. Oh, golly, Minerva said, Leopold's in the bakery. Mr. Cluckhorn ran out of the store. Help, police, thief, he shouted. Officer Wadsworth Dooley dashed to the rescue. Arrest this girl, Mr. Cluckhorn shouted. She just ate five cakes. 14 pies and 12 dozen cookies. Why, this little bitty girl isn't much bigger than a dozen donuts herself, Officer Dooley said. 
How could she eat all of those cookies, cakes, and pies? It wasn't me, Mr. Dooley. Honest, Minerva said. It was Leopold, my see-through crumb picker. He's very hungry today. Help! Stop! Great Caesars! It's a hurricane! The grocer next door ran into the street. All of his apples, peaches, pumpkins, ham slices, and soda crackers had disappeared. I didn't know Leopold liked pumpkins, Minerva said. He never ate one of those before. We've got to catch Leopold before he eats everything in town, said Officer Dooley. Bring a ding a ling, just then a loud bell clanged. Officer's Dooley hat flew off. His hair jumped up. He pulled out his pistol. It's the burglar alarm, he, saw, he shouted. The bank is being robbed. Woo! Sirens shrieked and squad cars raced up to the bank. Fifty policemen jumped out with clubs and guns. The bank manager was crying and flapping his arms. It's all gone. Every dollar, every nickel, every penny, he moaned. All of our pretty money sucked up into thin air, gone forever. I'll bet Greasy Foot Gumpnik did it, said one policeman. No, it sounds more like Pig Eye Pimpleheimer to me, said another policeman with the big eyebrows. No, it wasn't Greasy Foot or Mr. Pig Eye, Minerva said. It must have been Leopold, my see-through crumb picker. He thinks money is good to eat, but he won't like it. I'm sure he'll give it back. Leopold didn't like the money. It tasted awful. He blew it out and it scattered all over the street. Everybody scrambled around, picked up the money, and carried it back to the bank. Down the street, Mrs. Pushnik ran out of her candy store. She was holding on to Leopold's invisible tail. I've got him, she screeched. The air was filled with candy wrappers. Oh dear, it's Leopold again, Minerva said. He likes candy, but he can't swallow the paper. This has got to stop, Officer Dooley shouted. Come with me, men. We'll surround this see-through crumb picker and march him down to jail. We can't arrest him if we can't see him, said the chief. We have to arrest him, sir, said Officer Dooley. He's eating everything in town. I know what we can do, said the chief. We'll paint him. The little girl can paint him all over, and then we can see if we want to arrest him. That will be lots of fun, Minerva clapped her hands. I never thought of that before. Why, we'll be the first people ever to see a see-through crumb picker. She brushed some yellow, bright yellow on Leopold's tail. She painted red and yellow stripes on Leopold's back and some purple legs and yellow toes. You're going to be a darling, Minerva said. Leopold wagged his curly tail. She painted yellow legs, purple toes, and yellow ears. Hurry, said the chief, let's see what his face looks like. Minerva painted purple and white eyes, and Leopold winked at her, and she winked back. Purple and yellow stripes are best for noses, Minerva said, and she painted out to the very end of Leopold's long nose. Look how long that nose is. Oops, she said, he's eating again. Stop him, the chief shouted, he's eating my lunch. But it was too late. Leopold had eaten every last crumb. I won't arrest him, roared the chief. I don't want a hungry lunch robber like that in my jail. Take him to the zoo. That's where he belongs. Well, maybe that's the best place after all, Minerva said. He'll be nice and warm there and have plenty of crumbs all the time. Hundreds of children came to the zoo every day to visit Leopold. They ride on his back and climb his long trunk. They bring sacks of crumbs and love him more than all the other animals put together. Once when it rained, all the paint washed off Leopold and he became invisible again. The children thought he had run away and they all began to cry. Minerva knew what to do though. She ran and got some paint and soon Leopold was as bright as ever. Now whenever it rains, Minerva goes to the zoo and puts new paint on Leopold. Sometimes she puts polka dots all over him like this. He likes polka dots better than stripes. I do too. Do you? I hope you enjoyed that. That was one of my favorite stories back when I was a kid. Have a good one.